Hey guys, welcome back to Man Time. Today's episode, we are going to be diving into uh, small engines and how to uh, diagnose and repair and see what's going on inside of there. I've already rebuilt this saw, um, but I didn't put uh, a new piston in it. It had good compression. Um, it, it was hard to tell, you know, that there was anything wrong with the piston or the uh, or the jug or anything. I did look down inside the the jug; didn't have any scoring, so that all looked fine. Um, but with any of these small engines, um, combustion engines, they're, they're going to have wear items and on uh, all, you know, all these uh, two-stroke ones, the, the wear item is going to be that uh, piston ring and that's designed to wear out over time um, so you don't hurt your piston and or jug um, and uh, so a, a lot of the rotating equipment like that, I mean they're all going to be a wear item um, it just depends on how well it was made, whether or not you replace it uh, sooner or later. And for this one, it's been much, much later. From uh, I, I don't think that uh, it may have had a new piston in it at some point, but uh, yeah. Um, so we're going to be doing this. I've also got a weed eater, um, so this one's going to be a whole lot easier. I'll start with this one and then maybe move on to the weed eater in uh, in another episode. But uh, I'll show you what's going on here. And uh, what, what's happening is when I give it gas, it's just kind of falling on its face. And we'll do a compression test on it and show you how to do that. Um, so let's uh, let's get started. Welcome to man time. All right, so we'll start off here, um, and I'm just going to kind of show you what it's doing. So I'm going to choke it, turn it to the on position, and it, it's firing right up. It sounds. It, it does that in every single carb position. I've adjusted the high uh, from almost turned off to almost three turns out and it just does it everywhere. Um, so that's kind of how you know it, uh, it's not acting right, it's not running right. There's something going on. It's either the carb, um, but in this case I don't think it is the carb because I did rebuild the carb um, somewhere around a year ago. Uh, so I'm back to factory. Um, on the high, uh, did one and a half turns out. Something's obviously wrong with this one, and um, my uh, my weed eater was having the same exact symptoms. Uh, so I'm assuming that it's going to be the piston and or the rings. Um, but you can see there when it's idling and it's on that low jet, it's doing just fine. So it could be the carb, but we can do a compression test here uh, to uh, to figure that out for sure. Let's let's jump into it. All right, so here's our compression test kit here. And we're just going to find one of these uh, that's going to match the uh, the threads on uh, on here. And it looks like that one there uh, looks like a pretty good candidate. So uh, we'll try that one. Yeah. And you just need to uh, to hand tight it in there. It's got an O-ring on there, and then uh, we'll hook up our gauge, and um, then just bleed out the pressure and see if we've got some compression in here. Thank you. 
I mean, it's showing some compression here. Yeah, so it feels like it's got good compression. Huh. Well, it may just be a carb issue. But now we know, right? Yeah, I'd be ecstatic if it was just a carb issue. Okay, well, yeah, and another thing you can do here is kind of look inside right in there and take a look at your uh, your piston. And um, there's no kind of marring or anything on there. And uh, yeah, we're getting some compression, so now we'll, we'll jump into the carb. Looks like I have found the problem, and uh, that is a screen, a little mesh screen, that is uh, supposed to be nice and clean and keep all the trash out of the carburetor, and it did its job. Apparently, uh, had some trash coming through the carburetor. So this should be an easy fix. Not too bad. Yeah, I guess it was just a uh, varnish of gas. But uh, yeah, there's that, there's that screen, and uh, yeah, it just had a bunch of varnishy, nasty gunk in it. Hmm. All right. Yeah, whenever I look at one of these, I'll take a flat file and just kind of run over the edge of it here, and just make sure there's no high spots. Get it nice and flat. Blow it off. All right, we got a clean screen. We're gonna go back together with it.
Oh, this sun is <laughs> the sun is something else. Got it. Uh, got it done before breakfast, though. Uh, so what we did there? Um, did a compression test on it, made sure that the uh, piston, rings, jug, everything was still getting good compression. It was, um, to my absolute delight, because that just meant that uh, it was probably a carb issue. So now um, I've got some fresh gas in it. I set the carb back to one and a half turns out on both the high and low. And um, yeah, we'll just uh, give it a try here. Choke. turn uh, high and low um, in a little bit to reduce the amount of gas. <laughs> All right, so I ended up turning the high and low back uh, to about one turnout. So I guess the the factory settings of one turnout is is pretty close to good. But I found a new problem here. Um, I don't know if that was my spring breaking uh, or, or what the deal was right there. But uh, with this model, it's super easy to get in there and get at that spring um, right there, just two screws. So um, I'm gonna do that. But uh, I'll let you get back to what you were doing. Thanks for joining me today on Man Time. Just a little uh, small engine diagnosis there and, and what you can go through the steps testing for compression. If it's not compression, um, most likely it's something to do with uh, fuel air, which is going to be carburetor, which is what this was. Just that little filter inside of there. And um, th those filters have, have bit me several times. So hopefully this will help you out in uh, doing a, a thorough diagnosis and, and fix on, uh, on your small engine. So thanks for joining me. Today on uh, Man Time, guys, thumbs up, subscribe, all that stuff. Uh, get out there, have you some Man Time, too.